Hey, Margie here. I'm really excited about today's episode because October 20th is World Osteoporosis Day. And in honor of that, what I decided to do is really talk about what are the ingredients that that really have helped people go from being afraid of an osteoporosis diagnosis to looking at it as an opportunity and looking back that, you know what? That was a catalyst for so much positive change in my life that it was a blessing in disguise. And that's possible. And I wanted to talk about what were the pieces that really did that. So to do that, I asked my husband, Dr. Craig Bissinger, who's been on the podcast before, to interview me. And because he brings a lot to the table as well, since as an, OB, as an OBGYN in private practice, and he deals with women all day long, and he's dealt with people with osteoporosis and other issues. So I thought he'd be a good person to discuss this with. So lots of great tips and, you know, just to really get you started because, and get out of overwhelm and, you know, where do I begin? That's what we talk about. So anyway, stay tuned. Welcome, Craig. Thank you so much for being here today. A couple of days, it's World Osteoporosis Day, October 20th, and I'm just excited to share information with people that can really make a difference in their lives. So I'm going to turn it over to you to ask me questions, but I'm also going to have you chime in because you have so much to offer as well from your experience. Thank you, Margie. And I do want to acknowledge Margie's contribution to osteoporosis. For many of you, you may know Margie is from her podcasting or just from the summits and other things that she's done, which have been quite amazing. But the silent and quiet work she's been doing, you may not know about for the past 25 years, Margie has been working with the state of New Jersey on their health and senior services committees, fixing, changing the way exercise and the activities of daily living and how women and men in this state take care of themselves and how they fight osteoporosis. And it's been really remarkable. And I know she's modest about it, but she's been honored numerous times by the state. And she's looked upon almost in a mythical manner by the people in the state because of those interesting little ways that she just puts her touch on all the different kinds of exercises in a way that is empowering and gentle. So I think people appreciate that. And I want everyone here to know that today. But wait, before I just have to chime in, it's a group effort. I would never be able, we have a, just so I get out what it is. There's a New Jersey Interagency Council of Osteoporosis. And really there's a lot of us and we work together. So it's a group effort. I would never have been able to do what I've done without this amazing group. So sometimes when you're part of a group that you're doing something for the greater good, it's, it's very helpful. And it's been very rewarding because we've made a huge difference in the state of New Jersey, but I didn't know you were going to talk about that, but anyway, let's move on. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a good way to segue into my first question, because you've been doing this for many years, I think since you were probably 12, because it's been 25 years, <laughs> um, <laughs> You've had a lot of chance to see people exercise and do many different things to help improve their bone health. So I was hoping that maybe you might be able to give us a few key ingredients on the proper way for people to get from the idea that they're being told they have osteoporosis and that fear that envelops them, the paralysis they have and what they can do to move forward to improve their health and their bones. You know, it's funny, just today I came up with I mean, it's not that original, but I was thinking like, what is the special sauce? And then what came into my head was mind, body, spirit, I mean, really MBS. So mind, body, spirit, and support. So there's two S's. And I thought, you know, when someone dials in those pieces, the mind, body, spirit, and support, guess what happens? Another MBS. And what is that? my best self. And I really think it's a combination of all of those pieces. It's not one, but it's, it's the combination of all of those combined with not going overwhelmed. Because the biggest, as you, you asked me about paralysis, and I think the biggest thing that happens, and this is, and you can say what you think with your patients, but what I've seen is that it's overwhelming. You get this diagnosis, you're feeling good. You don't really, or you may not have an issue. And all of a sudden you get this, you, know, you get a bone density test and they say, you have osteoporosis and your heart just sinks. And you have all these, you, know, you envision the worst. 
And I think the, and then just a couple of things, you know, not knowing what to do, not knowing who to guide you. There's so many different options, so many different things. And then you sort of shut down because it's so overwhelming. So I think the number one thing that stops people, and I want to tell everyone, don't let this happen, is overwhelm because it will stop you in your tracks and you won't do anything. And I think you know, it's sort of like a car sitting in the garage. It could be the greatest car in the world, but, or sitting on in the driveway and it doesn't move. If we don't have any action, however small, nothing is going to happen. So I, the good news is that when you dial in these pieces, really miracles can happen. And I always, I like to look at osteoporosis as an opportunity. You get this diagnosis and you're going to, people can look back and say, this is going to sound crazy, but that was the best thing that ever happened because it gives you a window into yourself that you may not have known. You may not have known that you've, you know, you have to examine all aspects of your life and we'll go into that in more detail, but you, you know, there's things you may not have known that you can address. And then when you do truly, you can live a very different life and a much better life. And so I, I look at it as an opportunity, one that you can empower yourself, one looking back, and we will go into it in more specifics. So do you think you can give everybody like a nice tip on this idea? Yeah, well, let's start with mindset. So I think this is very, very important because what you focus on grows. And unfortunately, the average person, and they research this, 80% of our thoughts are negative. So if we're waking up in the morning and thinking, oh, poor me, I have weak bones and I'm going to fall and what other terrible things can happen, which a lot of people do. A lot of people live in fear and all of a sudden, instead of being a strong, powerful person, they have this diagnosis and they feel weak and timid and scared. And so if that's what envelops you, that's how you're going to live your life. That's how you're going to present yourself. And you're going to be a victim. And nobody, but nobody gets better when they're living in victimhood. You know, oh, poor me. And so what's so amazing is when you switch that to be a victor and look at solutions. Well, what can I do? What are options? What's going on? And then when you start looking at possibilities and acting on them and changing the thoughts, you know, you wake up in the morning, okay, what's the best thing that could happen to me today? Or what great things lie ahead? Or what good is here I can't possibly see? You know, just to start, or even with the bones, what good thing for my bones could I do today? You know, it could be eating some more, uh, some more leafy greens. It could be, you know, doing some walking could be balancing an exercise while you're brushing your teeth, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. You're just starting to focus on the good that exists and it makes a big difference. So that's part of it. And also manifesting, you know, if you just, I, I'm such a big believer and I see this work every single day, get a picture in your mind of the life you want to lead where, you know, you want to be on vacation with your family. You want to be hiking. You want to be with friends, whatever it is, you know, being active and vibrant and just see yourself there because it's possible, but create it in your mind as though it's happened, super powerful. That was very inspiring. <laughs> I, I do it every day as well. When I get up before I go to work, I see, think about what I'm going to be able to do today to make people's lives better. And so I follow your footsteps for sure. Now, what about the body? Okay. Now with the body, so there's so much we can do on the body, but you also need information. And, you, you know, it's not something where we can just imagine that we're going to get stronger and it just happens. That's not quite the case. Yes, it's good to have the mind, but you need to take the right action. So with the body, there's numerous things. And we'll go in a little more detail because so there's nutrition. You know, we need to make sure we're getting the right nutrients, but we also need to make sure that we're absorbing the nutrients. We don't have any issues, sort of like a hose, you know, you're giving it water, but if you, if you stop the hose and crimp it, you're not going to receive it. And so if there's an issue with your digestive system or problems, you are not going to be getting the nutrients, even if you're taking everything on the sun, you know, all the best supplements and eating all the best foods. But that's even brings up a bigger point. And I think the most important, well, one of the most important things, all of these pieces are important and mindset you have to start with, because if you don't get that, you know, nothing else is really going to be as effective. Mm -hmm. 
But back to the other thing, and this is what I see, and we can talk about this a little more because I know you've had a personal experience, but the root cause, oftentimes people get a diagnosis with osteoporosis. And in medicine, a lot of times just going right to symptom control. Okay, let's go on a medicine. This is your DEXA report. Let's go on a medicine. Yeah, take some calcium, vitamin D and exercise. And you know, I'll see you in a year, whatever it is. You know, not to put doctors down because there's tremendous, wonderful things doctors do. But unfortunately, that's what a lot of conventional doctors have learned is the treatment for osteoporosis. And so they're missing so often underlying root causes. And just for example, you know, people have, and we're, we'll talk about you in a minute, but a lot of autoimmune issues or inflammatory issues, you know, there's many different root causes that can be missed and you need to address that. Otherwise you are not going to get better and stay better. You know, you're just masking the symptom. Right. And, you know, I, I would actually like, cause I, some people may have listened to the podcast episode and I'll link it in the show notes that I did with you, Craig, because that was really an example of, you know, um, we're not going to go into the whole story because it takes a long time and it's in the podcast, but you had an autoimmune issue. Um, you know, you're losing weight. You were going through four shirts at night, sweating with fever. You were, your clothes were falling off you and you were coughing that you could barely talk. So it wasn't very pleasant. And the sad thing is, you know, the doctor said, I'm sorry, I, you know, after money and money and money, you know, and testing and testing and testing, I'm sorry, there's nothing we can do. And I, I don't know, how did you, you were positive through it all. How, how did you, I never really asked you because I just didn't want to go there, but how did you, um, how did you keep your mindset positive? And, and when, 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 and after that was said? Um, well, I had the number 28 in my head. You know, what 28 was, that was the years, how many years we've been married. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> thinking about the commitments you make when you get married to stay with someone for the rest of your life. Um, and you're my kids, truthfully. I mean, those things were there to drive me. I mean, I'm a doctor. Uh, I respected the physicians. And even when we told them what the diagnosis was, we presumed they just hadn't experienced that diagnosis, which is a, a gluten sensitivity and all the multiple systems that affected my body. So when I was had nothing left to do. I turned to you. I trusted the fact that there was no one else left. And this is honestly the truth. Um, then you listen to the episode, you'll hear 30 or 40 minutes of me dwelling on the topic. Um, we just did this together and, and you no, know, it was either I was going to live with you or I wasn't. And so that's how it got to me. Well, I, I think the big message for everybody listening is if they say, oh, that's it, you know, you're just going to have to live like this, dig deeper, find other practitioners, keep bursting, because the truth is in today's society, you need to be your own advocate. And we don't want to alienate the doctors because they mean well. And I think it was really great because you went back to them and you explained about molecular mimicry and what could happen with gluten and really taught them so that when the next person comes in, they're open-minded because it's not that they, it wasn't that they meant harm. They just didn't know about this possibility. And I think with a lot of the root causes, I think most people know now, for example, celiac, if someone has celiac disease, everybody will know, yes, that can cause osteoporosis. But what about what you had gluten sensitivity? And I can't even tell you, I mean, this is just one example, how many women I've worked with who once they stopped gluten, all of a sudden their inflammation went away as well as their bone density increased. So it, again, that's not the only one, but just an example that you need to really understand root causes and really see what else may be causing your bone loss. And it may not be one thing, you know, but if you have eczema, you have inflammation, you need to figure it out. So, okay. So root cause and again, thank you for sharing that. But what I, the other thing I just have to commend you, which is so, it's the pay it forward. You know, when you go through something, there's always gifts. There's always gifts. And well, what were your gifts from this? Let, let me hear it from you. What were your gifts from going through? It was really, it was a terrible, it was yeah. not a fun situation at all. I've certainly opened me up to my patients and their concerns in a very different way. I started to understand their struggles and help support them as they took alternative paths. Although I wouldn't let them go in alternative paths until I felt that we had gone down and kind of run to end the end of things. And truthfully, 
I started talking about gluten. I talked very openly to my patients when they had difficulties. And I think it soothed them to know that I struggled with it, the same problems that they did. But at the same time, years, a year or two later, people came back and they were different. They were better. And, you know, when we, in, and when we talk about osteoporosis, for instance, and you talk about how you're going to eat better and you're not going to have gluten and you're going to exercise and you're going to sleep and you're going to be happier. That's just not your bones. That the whole person got better. And that's one of the amazing things that, you know, I, I've, I've read some of the reviews and thank yous that Margie's gotten over the years and people are changed in a, in a way in, that you could not even envision. And as you listen to some of, the, some of her podcasts and she's sent some of those people on there and it's very uh, special. Well, thank you, Craig, for all the kind words. I, I really wasn't the purpose of having you on, but I appreciate them. But I just wanted for everybody, this piece is so important. Make sure that you dig deep and just look at all the possible root causes. Now, you're not missing anything because if you are, you know, there's so much that can be done. And so I think the best thing is to work with an integrative physician or functional medicine doctor, if you're not able with your regular doctor to figure out all the different pieces. So, okay. So you want to dig deep and make sure you don't miss any root causes for the body. Because as you said, this is such a good point. And this is what's so exciting for me. The bones aren't in isolation. It's not that every single thing we do for our bones helps our whole body. And this approach, the mind, body, spirit, and support approach you know, you're a happier person. And that just, you know, it, every cell in your body is affected by that. So it, as I said, it, it transforms you in so many positive ways that it, that's what's so exciting, I guess, about what I love what I do, because you see these transformations and, you know, so back to the body. So body's critical. And, you know, so we talked about nutrition, root causes, and the key here, that what I think is so, so important, and maybe it's my background as a physical therapist doing this for you know, over 25 years with osteoporosis, but the exercise piece. And it's not any old exercise because you, know, you may be told, oh, just walk or just do some weight bearing and resistance. It's very specific and research has shown what works and what doesn't work and what's dangerous. And so I'm not gonna go into it right now, but the strength training is key. Posture is key balance is key because usually what we care about is not the score and the bone density. Yes, we want to make sure, you know, we're not going down and it, you know, it's, it's one measure, but the key is we don't want to fall no matter where we're at, we can improve our balance. And the people I've seen people, you know, any time you start working on that, you're going to be so very different and preventing falls and fractures. So it's such an important piece that you can work on. So the exercise, all these components are very, very important, and as well as avoiding things that increase fractures. And I've talked about this, but I'll just say it real quickly. Rounding and forward bending have been shown to increase vertebral fractures when people do forward bending, which makes sense because the front of the vertebrae is where compression fractures happen for people with osteoporosis. So we want to avoid that as well as the extremes of rotation and side bends. Again, I am going to tell everybody that I have put together for, 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 World, stop, for World Osteoporosis Day, I have put together a webinar that goes into this in more detail. So we're just touching on it now, but there will be a resource, a free resource that people can utilize for more details. But the key is the exercise is very, very important. And it's always been so much fun because so many people have come to me over the years as couch potatoes. And because of the osteoporosis, they were forced, you know, the doctor's like, you have to exercise. So they started exercising and guess what happened? They became a lifelong exerciser. And when you're strong, you are empowered when you can do things for yourself. And I have women helping me move chairs and classes and it's, there's just nothing better. So the exercise piece is very important, very individualized. And my suggestion, and for most people, this is covered by insurance. My suggestion, the very best thing you can do is go see a physical therapist and get, at least start with that, get an individualized program for you, someone who works with osteoporosis. And you can do that through the American Physical Therapy Association. They have a directory 
Um, there's a program, Too Fit to Fracture, as well as Sherry Betts on her site has physical therapists who've been trained. So there's ways, or you can call around and say, do you have a physical therapist who specializes in osteoporosis? So anyway, that's exercise. Again, we can, this could be five hours, but exercise, nutrition for the body, as well as looking at root cause. That's so important because you have to take care of your body. What about the spirit? That's a little interesting. Yes. And I have to say, because I'm a very spiritual person and I've always believed in prayer and getting guidance from whatever you call it. It doesn't matter. You call it source, universal, whatever it is, it, the universe, it doesn't matter. Uh, and every, it's for everyone, it's different. And it's something that's always been a part of my life that I never shared with patients. I just thought, oh, they'll think I'm strange or it wasn't appropriate to share with patients what I did. And then for one reason, somebody, you know, was just so down and out. I said, what the heck? And that's also how I started with the happiness. I shared what worked for me during a tough time with chronic pain patients. And I saw miracles happen, you know, and that's what made me realize that this piece is, is beyond, is the most important. But with the spirit, when people connect to something higher than they are and ask for guidance, it's trans it's amazing what happens. And I think just too many people live their life not knowing they can open up and that you can get guidance if you just ask for it. It doesn't matter where it's from, you know, whether you think it's your intuition or whether you pray to whatever. And it's so amazing when you ask for this. And, you know, I get it every single day. I will. If I have, I journal and I recommend that as a good place to start, you know, just start writing down things and, you know, or just write anything that's on your mind. And then you can ask questions. You know, you don't know the answer to this. Just ask a question and then be open to receive. You'll get signs, you know, be open to signs. I get one of my signs is my mother passed away, unfortunately, quite a while ago and I get white feathers. So, and you've seen them, right, Craig? Well, we've seen them in the craziest places that, you know, recently in the locker room, a locker room. How could this, this be a big white feather? It wasn't there earlier on the bench of a uh, bench on the locker room. <laughs> but anyway, and it just tells me I'm on the right track. So, you know, anyway, you know, this is just a very important, I, I think it's something, if it's not ever been part of your life, open up. It can be through meditation. It can be through prayer. It can start with journaling. But this piece, you'll be so surprised how it leads you or the right people. All of a sudden, life becomes synchronistic. The right people pop in and like I manifested you, Craig. Oh, <laughs> you sure? <laughs> you didn't miss it by that much. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so yes, that's a big piece. So, so I would say just be open to it. And, you know, there's many ways to to you know, get involved with that. But for now, I would just say be open and whatever, you know, is, is best. And you can start with journaling or just asking what else is possible. And the last thing you mentioned was support, which is kind of a nebulous term. And I wonder if you can kind of explain a little bit more what you mean about support. What I mean support is it absolutely matters who you surround yourself with. We can't do it alone in life. And it was so fascinating. They did a study. It was called the Harvard Study of Adult Developments. I think that was the exact name. It was led by a Dr. Robert Waldinger. And what they did, well, actually, it's been over 80 years they've been studying this. So they took men who were, who were, you know, were, who were at Harvard, people who were actually enrolled at Harvard, mm -hmm. and they also took and then, then they also took another population of people living in the poorest communities in Boston. So they really wanted two spectrums. And they looked at these people and they looked at everything. They looked at their blood work. They looked at so many different facets. They just looked for all these years. And they wanted to know what was the most important thing for longevity and for health. And what did they find out? It wasn't your cholesterol level. It wasn't markers of your heart. It was good relationships, that good relationships. And this was his quote, good relationships keep you healthier and happier. So at the end of the day, 
that was the most important thing when they looked at these men over 80 years, regardless of socioeconomic, regardless of their jobs. So it's a very big piece that we can't underestimate how important the relationships in our life are. And so it's just something to, you know, oftentimes we get busy or we're worried about our bones and we're worried about our, you know, the relationships really matter. And if you don't have a community, get involved with one. Or does your community rise you up or does it bring you down? And you want to be in the right community. You want the right support that's going to help you on your journey to be your best self, whether it's with your bones or whether it's any other aspect of your life. So, yeah, so that's what I meant by support. It's quite a piece of information. I really do think you're correct in that response. And I know that you do a lot of online programming with happiness and your bones classes and all that. And you have a community of people who have followed you for years. And I think you find a great pleasure in, in that community yourself. I couldn't agree with you more, Craig. During the pandemic, it was my online communities that kept me going. And the happiness group, we really kept each other going. It was that we were looking for what was good, what was positive happening, because there were things despite like what, and and it, it was so wonderful. And I, I agree. So I'm just so grateful for these communities that I've been able even though I lead them, I get just as much out of it, meeting all these people and sharing. And there's just a special energy, even online, I've said the energy of the group. And there's just nothing. Well, you've been, you came to my happiness class. <laughs> I'm a graduate. I didn't do so good the first time. I had to go back and do it again. You know, that's when I knew that you really liked it because the first time you were the tech person and I needed you. And the second time, I really didn't, and you still came, Perfect. and I realized that that was, you know, and then I guess more importantly, what makes me happy, the biggest thing is when you've told, and we've done a podcast on this too, how you use it with mm. your patients right. and how you've been able to share and spread the information. So it's all been, all been good, but anyway, so yes, yeah. so those are the key ingredients. As I said, I do have, I, I am you know, there is a webinar that goes into more specifics with the osteoporosis, but I just, I think what I really wanted to get across today was that there's so much that can be done. Start with the mindset, start with that piece, start with your thoughts. And right now, you know how I'd like to end, unless you have anything else you want to ask me? Let's all just vision ourselves. Just close your eyes for a minute and envision yourself Let's do it. Let's do it five years down the road. Let's think five years from now, you've accomplished what you wanted to accomplish, whether you've gone on your exercise program or whether you've, you know, changed your habits and you're nourishing your body, you're nourishing your mind, you're with people you want to be with, you've done things to reduce your stress and increase happiness. So just envision yourself thriving in life just so happy to wake up and embrace the day. And what would that look like? Just envision yourself in that place and feeling so good with this joy running through you and just happy to be alive. And you're strong, you're empowered. So let's just breathe that in. And we could stay in this position or you can come back to that, but just know this is possible. And on World Osteoporosis Day, Put that vision of yourself and start one step. Again, we don't want to overwhelm. One step. Do one thing. And as I said, you can go to the webinar. There'll be more things to do. But one thing, you know, it could be anything. Just starting to reduce your stress, you know, add more vegetables, whatever it may be. <laughs> you know, making exercise a priority, whatever it is. One thing. Start there. It's not a race. And your bones don't change overnight, nor should you look at it as an acute problem. It's a light, you know, modifying lifestyle takes time and that is just fine. But just start on that step. And I, I, I want to hear from people once you start making these changes. What she said was good. <laughs> anyway. I've been doing this for 38 years. I'm smart enough to know what she's doing is really good. <laughs> and it's really helped me in my community of patients over the last decades. And I know it can help you too. Anyway, thank you everybody for listening. And thank you, Craig, so much for being here. I so appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day. And, and again, thank you.
Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. And as I said, there's so much that can be done. I hope it empowered you to take action, to get out of overwhelm and just know there's so much that can be done and so many people have been helped. And my goal is that you, you know, get out of overwhelm and start taking action and that you too will look back at osteoporosis diagnosis or osteopenia or whatever made you be concerned about your bones and a way, a window to look at your life, make changes that you'll look back and really feel it was a blessing in disguise and just be so happy with what you've done. And it's all possible. I promise you, I see this every single day. And as I mentioned, I did create a webinar. It's free. Listen to it. There are more tips and strategies that you can put into use that will really make a big difference. So thank you so much for listening and being part of my community. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.